Hey, what's up? Back again. first bass note hit me in the chest and I was just like, there's no way that's too late. MB Enclosures has his own YouTube channel. And this guy is an animal when it comes to designing boxes. And hey, how y'all doing? Uh, I'm making this video here in response to a comment that was made on the Q-Class L78 Sundown UA comparison. And first, let me explain this to you. Uh, I think it's got one of the guys named Hippo, Hippopotamus. He said, I didn't explain how the VD, which is the our volume of air displaced by the cone, affects SPL. If you look at this subwoofer, you will see that it's deep. If you put a ruler or something across the top, the deepness is deeper than, say, the deepness that you have on a... Uh, Kick a L7 Q class or even a, uh, I don't know, some J Audio, you know, uh, Digital Designs. None of those use real, real deep. Uh, no, they, None of them use very, very deep cones. Well, there's a reason why, and I just use this for the, for the kicker. For instance, normally the deeper the cone, the high X max, it's an inefficient driver. Google it. Google it. And look at different sources and see where I'm not telling you the truth. It's got a deep cone and a high X max. 90% of the time it's an inefficient driver. I can attest this is true. High X, high X max subwoofers with very, very deep cones are very inefficient. They need a lot of power to get a given loudness. Most of the ones that you, and the very, very deep paper cones, let me throw that in there as well. The subwoofer technologies that use the poly, poly, ooh, polypropylene cones, uh, JL, uh, Kicker, uh, Alpine, the paper is not only more structurally sound and more rigid, I mean, the plastic is not, not only more structurally sound and rigid than the paper cone be, especially especially at the, the velocities and the and the G's, the, the, the momentum, the inertia, the energy they will feel as they move back and forth. You might not see it to your eye, but that paper cone is, 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 is wobbling just a little bit. Not enough to cause too much distortion, but it is. And that's, that's, that's a challenge with the paper cones. That's why they put Kevlar, and different materials in. Sometimes manufacturers say, hey man, you want a carbon fiber dust cap as an option. All that is used to strengthen that paper cone, which is really just one piece. Most with that paper cone is just one piece. It's just one piece, paper cone. They use different materials and uh, wood pulp and materials to stiffen it up. Some put a layer on top of it. Whereas with a polypropylene cone, and particularly, I just use this right here, this, this Kicker Q class. The cone in the Kicker Q class is not made of paper, and it's comprised of three pieces. Just for the cone, it's three pieces. Just for the cone, it's three pieces. It's three pieces that are put together to make this cone. This rib structure is to help keep it stiff with the pressure that is exerted upon it. In actuality, and I showed y'all that because this is a Sundown SA V3. I have more excursion in this kicker, which is 17.5, than the Sundown SA8 V3. This subwoofer has the deep cone that you're talking about. The, the depthness to the cone, the VD, the volume displaced by the cone. And you're thinking because it's deeper than what you see on the kicker, then it's moving more air. Remember, the kicker also has a larger cone and has. I'm going to say, yeah, it doesn't have a shallow depth, but it has a larger cone. But it's also an efficient driver. Even though this one has more X-Max than this one, its cone is not deep because it's an efficient driver. It doesn't need a lot of power to get loud. Because of the size of its cone, it's going to move comparable, or if not more air per stroke, even though it doesn't have the depth into the cone. But as far as one being better than the other, it's just knowing that a deep paper cone 
And high X Max is a most of the times is an inefficient driver. A low X Max, shallow cone driver, most time are very efficient at generating a certain output. Two different designs doing the same thing. One may need one may need a little bit more power than the other. But when oh now I'm gonna cut this off here because I'm gonna actually talk about cones in my next video. But the comment, well, I gotta address this, this comment here. The comment here about paper cones, the brother that said this, I gotta address this. Uh, Boogie Man, this is incorrect, Boogie. The excursion on the paper cone is higher. It's common sense that the fibers and the paper cone would stretch because they're meant to, leading to more excursion than the plastic cone. Uh, all I'm gonna say is this right here. And I'm going to talk about it more in the next video as well. Brother, your paper cone is not stretching when it's moving. Your paper cone, this paper cone is not stretching. You want the cone as rigid as possible. It's not stretching. It does not lead to more excursion because you have a paper cone. Go ahead and we go to the next video. I did kind of clown you and make fun. I said, now nah, I'm going to keep the channel... I'm going to take that off. So I'm just going to address you man to man that that was an erroneous statement that you made on that on that comparison between the Q, Q class and the Sundown U8. That was erroneous. And if you really look at what you were saying, maybe you'll see, I mean, I must have been, I don't know, you must have been on something because the paper doesn't stretch as the cone moving. You want the cone, whatever cone body you use, to be rigid, period.